I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord, I invite the church to stand up. In Jeremiah, the Old Testament. Jeremiah 3. Three, we're going to read verse 25 in Jeremiah Jeremiah 4 and 4 verse 1 the Old Testament Twenty-five. Twenty-five. We lie down in our shame, and our reproach covers us, for we have sinned against the Lord our, our God, we and our fathers, from our youth, even to this day, and who have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Now verse 4, 1 says the following. If, if you will return to Israel, said the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abomination out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. Lord, we praise you and glorify your holy name for this instance that we have had in our fellowship with you. And we ask, Lord, that in your word, you may bless, once again, your people, the visitor that is here. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. God uses the prophet and says that the people of Israel was um, beggaring. To be vagrant, it it means to walking without any direction or any direction and any aim. To be um, without any objective, as we say in Brazil, like a blind man in a shootout and like a candy in the mouth of a toothless you don't know what to do so every advice of the lord is for life the desire of the lord is that everyone may be saved and that the lord has takes no pleasure in the life of the one who dies because the dead cannot praise the Lord but the Bible says that we who are alive we praise the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord and that the Lord who sent his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him no don't do not perish but have eternal life that's the desire of the Lord and Israel had no objective it was vagrant and Israel needed to make it a, a decision to make a change and the change was to is to was to go back uh, so in other words to get back to the the origin because Israel had distanced itself from the Lord so when the Lord uses the prophet, he says, how am, 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 am I going to place among us the, 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 my own children and give you a desirable land? So Lord, he began to move and trying to supply a way in order to bring his people back to God's presence. And the people um, on those days, 
they recognized, they recognized that they needed to change, take another direction. And it was necessary for them to change their lives. The Bible says that they were um, already um, um, drowning in their own shame. What it, what it means to be, what does this expression mean? It's to be left to die or to lay down. So the, the people were laying down in their own sh shame and they were covered with confusion. So it says here about a bed and about a blanket. And the Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, he says, because the bed will be so narrow and the, the blanket so short that no one will be able to be able to stretch on it. So we are going through a few days there, a little cold here in Florida, and you, my brother and sister, can imagine laying down a bed that was short in a very narrow blanket. If you try to cover your head, you just uncover your feet. If you cover your feet, you uncover your head. So it speaks of a moment of trial, of tribulation. When we lay down, we lay down at night. And the night is related to the darkness, the absence of light. So, outside of the project, outside of the revelation, outside of the plan of God. So then they were leaving this confusion. And God is not a God of confusion. The people of Israel had become two people. There were at that time, two kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. The Bible says that the divided kingdom cannot survive. God did not create a, a people to divide peoples. God created a people to be united in fellowship with one another. And therefore, we would have fellowship with God. So when man was in was in darkness, it didn't happen. That's why in the New Testament it says, if you walk in the light, like in no light that he is, we have a fellowship with the brethren. In the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son purifies of every sin. That was the situation of the people. Israel could have said, "No, no, the blame is of of Judah." And Judah could have said, "No, the blame." is laced with Israel. His discussion, this argument, this problem is like in the life of a couple. My wife blames me, I blame my wife. You never come into an agreement. You never come. And the argument continues and continues until the day is over. And then the glory of Israel was over. That was the situation that the people was living. They were both wrong. They were both sinned against the Lord. They both had went astray from the project to the Lord. And God was the father of both of them, of Israel and Judah. And this, this division happened after the death of two kings. And the kingdom of David, the kingdom was unified. David, and what he didn't see was the, the symbol of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we are in the presence of the Lord, there is no division. There is no separation because the blood of Jesus unites us. And the second king that came after him was his son, Solomon. And in whatever he didn't fail, he is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit convinces us of our sins. So, uh, in Israel, it was missing for Judah and Israel. Israel was divided, and at that moment, there was no presence of the Son, 
or the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, it says the following. If you have the Son, you have the Father. If you don't have the Son, you cannot have the Father. In other words, there was only a label. Content, there was nothing left. There was only an appearance. But the project of God, it was not present there in the life of that people anymore. They were then lying and uh, shame laying down upon their own mistakes and failures and they were covered with their own confusions because in order to create confusion oh, there's nothing better than us or our own minds our minds work to confuse us and they say the fallen because we sinned with the Lord against the Lord that's something that is very important that man needs to understand there's a text in the Bible and I, s I already quoted several I'm gonna quote another one what is the man complaining about have you seen that one man complains each one about their own sins that was a moment of re reflection for the church I didn't say it I right? am the one who needs to change Israel should have said no the the kill I am the one who's the guilty party Judah should have said also no I am the guilty party and they needed to reconciliate with one another and with their God because the desire of the Lord was to place the children in the desirable land and give them the excellent inheritance of the armies of the nations because the desire of the Lord is to bring his people to his church and, and his church to eternity so we see that at that moment it was a moment in which they had to rise up from their beds it was a moment in which they had to um, make a decision make a stand it was a moment in which they had to make a change and God also um, called them in order for them to make this change it was not mandatory for them to make this change because God does not force anybody to do anything God gave, gave us free will and with free will we can do can decide whatever we want to do with our own lives in, uh, in the book of Isaiah when he speaks about the narrow bed and uh, short blanket it speaks that the people uh, Jewish people had made a covenant with that and an agreement with hell and God said I'm going to cancel this uh, covenant I'm going to cancel this covenant I'm going to cancel it I'm going to annul this pact with death and God annulled I canceled this pact that I had made with death and the alliance that I had made with hell and you know how he um, canceled this my brother and sister he canceled this pact with the death of his firstborn he canceled with the death of his son it costed a high price for God for God to make a new covenant a new pact a new agreement with my life in order to demonstrate that he the Lord he loves me and that he has reserved for me a place in heaven a place for me in eternity and this is this same pact the same covenant the same agreement God wants to make with you and with me as well tonight the Bible says here that everyone sinned so I'm not 
criticize anybody here. I'm criticizing about myself because we are both in the same situation. We sin against the Lord. We all sin. And the wages of sin are death. But the uh, free gift of the Lord is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And that's what it was offered to me, to you, to my home, to my house, to this kingdom, and to all the kingdoms. A blessing of the Lord to our lives. And the Lord he says, how can we get out of this? How can we get out of this uncomfortable situation of confusion, of problems and adversities? He says, if you come back, O Israel, to me, you will come back to me. So maybe you, you are here with us, you may be thinking, I need to go back to my own church. I need to go back to my own denomination. That's not what I'm saying. You need to go back to the Lord. It's to go back to be in the presence of your God. It's not to go back to a church, to go back to a denomination. You know why? Because sometimes you go back to our church and we are we are in a church, but we have not come back to our God. In Brazil, there was a song in the 70s that said, had the lyrics that said, it doesn't matter if you have a rabbit's foot on your pocket, and it doesn't matter if the church prays, and if the church does everything wrong. It doesn't matter if you go back to a church or denomination. You need to go back to the Lord. The servant John the Baptist said the following, Repent. The Pentecost is Peter. Repent. And then you convert. On the back of the cover of the song book of this denomination says what I was I no longer no longer am so it's so it is a change the Lord says if you come back you will come back to me if you want to come back recognize that you failed and that you seen that you need the Lord in your life amen glory to God go back to the Lord but it's not only this. If you remove all the abominations from me, you will no longer walk wandering. We can mention a few examples. The prodigious son had everything. He was in the house of the father, eating, drinking. Comfortable. But he thought it was not good enough. So then he ran away he went away for a distant to a distant place and while he was there taking care of the pigs he realized he had made a, a bad choice and he said I sin against the father and against you the name of this is repentance he repented but that's not enough. He could have simply recognized that he had sinned and remained there. Would he resolve his problem? Would he receive a new garment, a new ring on his finger, a new shoot to his on his feet? Would he be able to participate on the banquet of uh, that his father prepared for him? In no way. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's not as enough for you to say that I sinned. You know what he did? He came back. If you come back to me, you will come back. So then he says the following. I will get up 
and I will be with my father. He converted, repented, therefore, and then convert. So when he made those two decisions, what happened was a complete change in his life. The father embraced him, kissed him, and prepared a banquet for him. My brother, the Lord has prepared a banquet, a celebration in heaven, in a place for you in eternity. Tonight he has brought you here because he wants us to go back to him. He wants to embrace us. He wants to treat you in the same way that he always wanted to treat you as a son or daughter. In this text, it says this. It says, Father will call me and I will not deviate from him anymore. So the Father is calling you tonight. He's calling you to bless our lives, our families, our homes, our family members. Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. You'll be blessed. You, your house, you and your family. And that's the desire of the Lord. And the Lord also has shown through a spiritual gift that at, at the door here of the church is parked. It is a spiritual gift, but you're not going to see this. You can only see this uh, spiritual things with spiritual eyes. There is a vehicle parked in, at the door of the church. That's the vision. And this vehicle was here, was a dumpster. It's like a garbage truck to collect all the things that were going to be um, removed from from all of us here and was going to be taken someplace else. But it had to de depart from us. We needed to remove the old things in our hearts, the broken furniture. And as we did this, we realized that it was a relief, a rest, and we realized that we didn't need any of it. My brother and sister, we only need two things. To repent and to convert. We only need to be children of God and not to go straight from the product that He has for our lives. Israel got lost on the path and lost direction. But when Jesus came, he said, I am the way. There's a text that said, you hear a voice that is behind you saying, this is the path. Do not deviate from it to the right, either for, to the right or to the left. In Psalms it said, 1,000 will fall on your right and 10,000 on your left but you will not be harmed. This is the desire of the Lord, that you are not harmed, that you are not, or you do not enter in a situation like this, to be laying down in shame and covered in confusion, leaving this moment in which we are living today in a short bed and a narrow blanket. You know why? Because Jesus, He is our rest. Jesus said, Come to me, all of those who are tired, and will find rest for your souls. This is the project of God for us tonight, a rest to our souls. Amen. Let's sing a song.
church will stand up. The Lord also has shown uh, a lady that uh, this afternoon she had an argument, a um, disagreement with her husband and the climate was not very nice. It was like a little weird. So then she decided to come to the house of the Lord. And as she entered the church here, the moment she put her feet here inside of the church, the Lord sent an angel all the way to her house. And the presence of the angel there in her house would already bring peace to the heart of her husband. And the Lord is sending you a message. Come home embrace and kiss your husband as forgiveness to him because he will also ask you forgiveness you know why because you're both wrong you're both in uh, based on human reason when we no longer walk on human reason we walk on revelation many times you will say my brother against me seven times Seventy times seven. In the prayer of uh, Father's prayer, is said Lord's prayer. It says, "Forgive our of our faults the same way we forgive someone else's fault." So that's the message that was given. Lord, we praise. We give you praise to your holy name. We thank you for this moment of fellowship and the peace of grace of favor your mercy may be following with us throughout this week and all the spirit of confusion and rebellion against you Lord may be destroyed by the blood of Jesus in our homes and our workplaces that we may your peace may reign there and so only so your name be glorified in our lives bless us at this moment in our homes, once again, we ask you, our family members, wherever they are, reach them with your grace, with your love, with your favor, with your mercy. Take us home in peace, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with, with the whole people of God, now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. The service is over. You just want to advise the church that this coming Sunday, we are not going to have Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. We're going to have a mini seminar there on the Church of Hallandale. It's going to happen at 8 o'clock in the morning. Just be prepared and don't come at 8 o'clock. Uh, come 7.20, 7.30 so you have enough time to 
sit down so we can receive uh, blessing of the Lord is reserved for us in the Bible you who are a visitor you can also participate there's no restriction our service are free this house is of the Lord if you desire you can come back as many times you want or you may find necessary we have serves at 8 o'clock we have Thursday at 8, 8 o'clock Saturday uh, uh, at night, uh, at night, you are also invited to come back, to come many more times. If you have any question regarding of what was said about the gifts or the message, this meeting with the Lord Jesus tonight, remain where we are. Raise your hand so we might identify you, and the brethren are going to give you the proper assistance. Amen.